I V M. Hi, you're listening to I V M Daily. Hi, welcome to a new episode of IBM Daily. My name is Abbas. IBM Daily is a show where IBM staffers talk about what's happening in the world, what's going on in the mind. And with me today in the studio is uh, Surbi. Hey, what's up? So me and Surbi are in the studio as uh, not just producers today, but also f- stand-up comedians. Yep. Because we're going to talk about a particular stand-up comedian named Louis C.K. Yeah. Um, if you are someone who listens to IVM shows regularly, especially the ones that feature us, you know we've to- spoken about Louis C.K. before, and how uh, Louis C.K. was accused of uh, misbehaving uh, with a lot of women. A lot of women came out and uh, uh, accused uh, Louis C.K. of sexually misbehaving with them uh, uh, in 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 very specifically uh, exposing himself in front of them. And he admitted to these allegations and wrote a quote-unquote apology letter and said that he was going to take a back seat. But uh, nine months after that apology, according to Deadline, uh, Louis C.K. is actually back on stage. Uh, Louis C.K. went up and did a surprise set on the 27th of August at Comedy Cellar. And not only is he back uh, doing stand-up, he actually got a standing ovation after Apparently, his set was yes. done. Yes. So there's been a lot of Twitter backlash about that. And, uh, mm-hmm. Me and Sulbi are just going to try and deconstruct about uh, about the whole case. And uh, what our thoughts well, are. What our thoughts are. Mm-hmm. So Sulbi, what are your what are your first thoughts about this whole thing? Oh, uh, so my first thoughts are just the fact that um, how what's like a is there like a I mean, I mean, again, the whole thing was super, like the apology again, it wasn't really an apology. And right. staying away from the media or like not publicly talking about it for nine months and then coming back, that doesn't like, that's not, that's not, I mean, you know, that enough. doesn't help. Yeah, that's not enough. You okay. just, and again, I feel like a lot of people, my first like problem with this whole thing is even if Louis C.K. went and performed in Comedy Cellar, mm-hmm. there are people who would like this again, this this one was un, uh, announced. unannounced and he just showed up. But if say like in two weeks or like a month from now, he, he even uh, basically puts out a show and people would still buy tickets to see him perform. So there are people out there who like, I mean, we're still fighting with the whole thing of separating the art from the artist, right. but that's not enough time. You know, so you do can't, you think the whole hmm. Me Too movement is not so established on ground? It's still very much online, but hey, if someone like a Louis C.K. does a show, hmm. you're still sure he'll be able to sell out the venue. I do think that's going to happen. Okay. And that's because of our, like, we're very, like, I feel a lot of people are very forgiving of harassers of like the stature of Louis C.K. personally because right. if you yeah, I think there are hmm. two things at play here I think uh, of all the uh, men who came down after hmm. the Me Too movement whether it, it was Harvey Weinstein or Kevin Spacey I think Louis C.K. was the one who was like still in his prime yeah uh, and yeah. Uh, Fans of Louis C.K. or admirers of Louis C.K. wanted to see more work from him. But then when he went down, they were like, oh, he was just getting good. So they were like, you know what, if getting to see more work from him comes at a cost of, you know, uh, ignoring uh, the the people that he uh, mistreated, we'll, we'll do it or something like that. But uh, I can see the face that you're making and I'll get your uh, opinion yeah. on that. But the point that you made about people will still buy tickets to mm-hmm. uh, see him, I have an interesting uh, point about that. So when Bill Cosby was touring mm-hmm. America, I think two years ago, which is about the time where his allegations became really big. Yeah. I remember there was this one incident where he was playing a theater and it was sold out. Mm-hmm. But as his show began, like two or three minutes into his show, there was a group of women at the show who had there to watch him they stood up and they started chanting we believe the women right and mm. they had to be uh, Again, thrown I feel out like of it's the, the women it's mm. just like it's the onus is on us to keep talking about me too and like right. to keep like putting this as like the front page news but like nobody else really, I feel like a lot of people who still support a Louis CK they don't like yeah they don't care about the Me Too movement as much as we women do Mm -hmm. and I feel again like the whole like another question that I generally have is do is there like a time I mean do we have a time for men to like is is there there, should there ever be a comeback should them should we give them such a like a leeway that okay maybe after nine months of being in exile you can come back and perform now is that by any means a punishment what what, what, what do you think do you think that is I don't I honestly don't know because again I used to admire Louis C.K. I know that him coming on performing and getting a standing ovation is wrong. Hmm. But 
if we have to start a debate about you know if like to come up with a stipulated time of them to come back and mm-hmm. like work now mm-hmm. is should we even be raising this question or should we just like drop right. it so online a lot of people have actually d- done this they've compared mm-hmm. Uh, the times that women celebrities or female celebrities did like one small uh, screw up somewhere mm-hmm. and for which apparently Catherine Heigl yeah. someone tweeted that yeah. Catherine Heigl was a little tough to and work with and her career yeah and yes. then she just disappeared from Hollywood because nobody would give her work and here you have someone uh, who admitted mm-hmm. to the fact that he uh, mm-hmm. mistreated women and, and, and he's not only back yeah. but uh, another thing that happened consequently is apparently Aziz Ansari also popped in yes. somewhere to do a show that's true and the, the, the speculation is now he'll be back on TV very hmm. soon so that's what I'm trying to get at like so, so so what about the Me Too movement is it still very online is it still very among a very specific group of people who are celebrating it and on ground where things have not changed at all I don't know what's the again like Louis C.K. coming up unannounced and hmm. everything I'm just trying to I figure mean, out I mean it's unannounced sure but someone at Comedy Cellar knew the person who was organizing yeah. the show knew he would of show up they were, he yeah. definitely informed someone I'm going to do, do, go do a few minutes at the end and I'm sure mm. I'm, and there is no video footage or audio footage of this but I'm yeah. sure when he went up on stage he deserved uh, I mean got a big round of applause um, so, so, so th- <laughs> yeah it just feels wrong the fact that so okay if the one fact is him performing right. is one but then the fact that people applause and give him a standing question that just feels it's wrong mm. because first of all I don't know I honestly don't know people get it's just like going back to work after being accused of sexual misconduct right. this is like an office situation if yeah, you're exactly. an employee I would not ask you to hey come exactly. back work on this PPT yeah. and if the PPT goes great wow yeah. standing away I mean him leaving somebody again tweeted about it, him leaving was like a case of workplace harassment yeah. and if someone in the office admitted that I exposed myself to these mm. women you would be like okay I'll just take a sabbatical and yeah. come back That's uh, that's yeah that's wrong yeah Uh, All right, at this point, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to try and uh, dig a little further in this and uh, try and speculate what uh, the future will be in these cases. We'll be right back. Did you know that Parsis in Mumbai, instead of being left at the Tower of Silence after they die, are now cremated? And why? Because a cow fell sick in the early 1990s. Did you know that the smog in Delhi is caused by something that farmers in Punjab do and that there's no way to stop them? Did you know that there wasn't one gas tragedy in Bhopal, but three. One of them was seen, but two were unseen. Did you know that many well-intentioned government policies hurt the people they're supposed to help? Why was demonetization a bad idea? How should GST have been implemented? Why are all our politicians so corrupt when not all of them are bad people? I'm Amit Varma, and in my weekly podcast, The Seen and the Unseen, I take a shot at answering all these questions and many more. I aim to go beyond the scene and show you the unseen effects of public policy and private action. I speak to experts on economics, political philosophy, cognitive neuroscience and constitutional law so that the insights can blow not only my mind but also yours. The Seen and the Unseen releases every Monday. So do check out the archives and follow the show at seenunseen.in. You can also subscribe to The Seen and the Unseen on whatever podcast app you happen to prefer. And we're back. Uh, So we're talking about Louis C.K. making a quote-unquote comeback in comedy and trying to uh, figure out how legitimate that comeback is. Um, So Twitter has blown up after this. A Mm -hmm. lot of people from the comic fraternity have criticized uh, his comeback and they're raising voices about it. So do you think if other comics speaking out against uh, Louis C.K., male Hmm. or female, uh, will that have an effect? Will that actually hinder him or his career from progressing uh, in his comeback? I don't think so. I personally feel like, again, this hate, Mm -hmm. like the fact that the two of us who are stand-up comics are the only ones talking about this is like says a lot because it, I feel like it only bothers us and only bothers the comedy fraternity. Mm -hmm. The general public, people who've just started like delving into comedy or Mm -hmm. just getting introduced to stand-up comedy, Mm -hmm. they don't give a shit. They will probably still go watch this guy, and that's what we want to. And again, if comedy seller and owners, like co- owners of comedy clubs, are not going to put a ban on this guy, this right. is going to keep happening. He's probably going to get tons of standing ovations, and we'll, yeah, this won't bother anybody except the comedy fraternity. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But then again, see, uh, the reason why Bill Cosby's case came into focus was because Hannibal Buress joked about it in mm. a show. Mm. Uh, so do you think, uh, that's what I'm kind of trying to get at, that other comedians ridiculing or calling out Louis mm. C.K. Uh, but this has happened. I feel like comedy comedians have so many fights. If you look, if you like... There was another very famous fight where one comedian called out another one about like stealing jokes. Yeah. So I feel like this is again information only available to us comics. Right. Like mm. it's people who are into in this field. In this field. So mm. it won't bother. So if I'm just like a normal person, if I'm just reading up the news and I see, oh, Louis C.K. is performing today, I for not more than one second will I be like, oh wait, that guy. I don't think I'm going to watch this guy because all the other comedians are talking shit about him. I will still go if I'm a big fan of Louis C.K. Okay, um, so I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. Again, mm. I'm not advocating what Louis C.K. did, and sure. uh, it's still in question. But um, does that mean there is no redempt, or there should be no redemptive arc no. for a person Again, like this? Again, it's like a, it's it's taking. I don't think there should be any redemption because again, I feel like uh, this is the time when after Louis C.K. has come out with his uh, so-called apology, mm. we need to stop this, stop discussing him, and mm. we need to stop talking about the survivors. Mm. And we need to basically take those people in account more than we talk about Louis C.K. Right. Or like, say Aziz Ansari also, like he recently performed. Mm. And still, the the news is about him. We're publicly talking about this guy and not the survivors, which mm. we need to kind of shift focus and talk about, you know, the women who came out. Even if they admit to it and say that, you know, they won't repeat it, you think that's just wishful yeah. thinking? Yes, I mean, not everybody gets this chance. I mean, right. again, again uh, women don't get that chance. Women so don't why get this men? chance, and yeah. this scars people for life. Right. So I mean, why not? You, and again, if you f up in your career, and if you if you don't get a career comeback, then it's, it's totally on you. Right? Why? There are so many other people who like go uh, go about their career without doing any of this, and mostly women. Hmm. So again, let's let's reward, let's credit where give credit where it's due. Right. Let's let's be kind to each other. Let's not like publicly like, masturbate in front of each. <laughs> I guess yeah, that's, that's definitely not uh, <laughs> the thing that I I think that pissed me off the most about the CK case was mm-hmm. uh, that he kept denying it for so many years and it was only when uh, the pressure mounted on him uh, recently like nine months ago <laughs> that he was like oh well yeah I kind of did it and like you said the apology mm-hmm. letter also praised himself more than oh I had no yeah. idea I had yeah no so idea that this, yeah. that's what pissed me off the most for years the rumors have been going mm-hmm. around for years are you saying this was common knowledge in the entire comedy fraternity yeah, yeah it was so and um, yeah, and 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 the way uh, other comedians sort of also shoved it off, shoved it away, saying uh, we don't know it. And CK himself, at least on two occasions on record, he was mm-hmm. like, "They are just rumors." And then he, him coming out and saying, "Oh well, well, yeah, I kind of did it." I was like, "Okay, that that really is that's what pissed me off the most." I just hope people so like if coming out and I don't know this might be very wrong. But if like, a lot of people who came out and accepted it, mm. their careers were ruined. Mm. Are people going to resort to not accepting things anymore? Because if this is something that you like, the minute you say, "Hey, I did this," right. and then suddenly you're like, "This," like you know, the media is all all around you. So is this going to make people not accept things and just go into an exile and stay away from the media? No, so that, that's why I think the Louis C.K. case is a test case because yeah. someone like Bill Cosby never admitted to it. <laughs> but he had to, he was dragged into court and, uh, you know, uh, everything, yeah. uh, pani ka pani happened. Yeah. And it was proved that, yes, you yeah. did drug women and rape them. Similarly with uh, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Uh, for years, uh, never admitted to it because nobody accused him because he was in such mm. a powerful, p- position, pow- yeah. powerful position. Again, dragged into court, is in jail. Mm. I think what Louis C.K. did was he thought, and I'm, I'm speculating mm. here, but I think he thought if he admits to it, mm. somehow that gives him the moral high ground saying that, uh, yeah, I kind of uh, screwed up so that people will sympathize with him saying, oh, he did screw up, but uh, he's admitting to it, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. So I think it, it might become a pattern where, where men actually do own up in mm-hmm. the in the hope that uh, they get that the sympathy, see, yeah. they get the public sympathy, ke, at least he's admitting to it. That's and what this, which is why the Aziz Ansari case, I was really confused because I really admire Aziz Ansari as a person. Mm-hmm. And I, again, that was also kind of a test case in what, 
like a new uh, set of rules for consent came about and mm-hmm. we were just really involved in that case mm-hmm. so again i feel like these things that are, everything around us is like uh, like every every each one of these cases like a test case we're right. still figuring out we're still testing the waters yeah. we're still g- trying to understand if if they should have deserve if they mm. these guys deserve a comeback yeah. or not yeah. so yeah also in the in aziz ansari's case i think i think he's all these guys whether it was louis ck or there was mm. bill o'reilly or these uh, newscasters who've also been accused of it they are mostly like in the 50s and 60s whereas aziz ansari was the one who was fairly young mm. in in his 40s i guess he he is in his early yeah. 40s or so, something yeah. so uh, i want to see how men who are accused in the 50s or 60s they have already done these things okay skeletons are being brought out of their closet uh i i would like to see if that those things happening is is having an effect on the younger comedians whether like yes there is a change uh mm. these younger comedians are now not taking women for granted mm. or are not trying to you know force yeah. themselves on to them and 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 this is definitely going to happen i feel i mean this happened in the bombay comedy circuit also recently uh-huh. where there were i mean again there were just news about how f- female comedians don't feel safe to perform right. in a particular comedy club right. they were we did come up with a comedy complaint committee right. so i feel like again it's starting a conversation like, right. at least again it's just maybe the comedy fraternity but it still feels so like support yeah it has yeah. to start somewhere yeah sure i think uh, i don't think that's such a bad thing if it's within the comedy fraternity because i mean at the at the risk of sounding uh, pretentious i think comedians are people who form opinions for the general public yeah. it it ha- what what we say on stage does have an effect to people listening to us mm. whether it's through youtube or podcasts mm. or whatever so i think the more comedians speak out about it the more things Will change. should change. Well, that's that's yeah, yeah, that's hopeful, and I feel that uh, that should happen. Yeah, yeah. And on that hopeful <laughs> note, uh, I think uh, we shall uh, wrap up today's episode. Uh, if you have any opinions about this, if you're a comedy fan, uh, if you're someone who has mm. opinions about uh, should harassers. have a redemptive arc uh, is is there or should they completely be shunned out do write into us you can reach out to us on social media we are at ivm podcasts on twitter instagram and facebook you can use the hashtag ivm daily uh, to let us know about this specific episode uh, you can follow uh, me and sir be personally my twitter handle is at abbas momin and i'm abbas momin 88 on instagram so be where can one find you you can find me on twitter at small talk police All right so that was our show we shall see you on another episode of daily uh, till then bye bye Every week comes a show where three people come together to tell you about stuff they like a movie a TV show a book and other stuff tune in every monday on the ivm podcast app to ivm likes batman approves this message thank you batman shunya wan shunya wan shunya wan billion dollar acquisition another copycat startup got formed no the tech world in india is surely moving double the speed of this voiceover tune in to shunya 1 every tuesday to catch us talking to the smartest people we know on the ivm podcast website app or wherever you get your podcast from